hello you guys it's dennis here from denix creatives welcome back to another tutorial in this video i'm going to show you how to design this church flyer with photoshop and with that said let's jump straight into it this video is brought to you by master bundles master bundles is an amazing marketplace for every graphic designer where you have an opportunity to sell your designs for this purpose you share some commission with the marketplace but master bundles does the marketing and seo optimization of your product to make more sales also you don't need to create or rent your own shop since you have your store at the marketplace it's a beginner friendly platform that started growing since 2021 this marketplace has only 50 percent commission from your sales and moderation is very easy there are many categories you can cover as a designer and be noticed by thousands of regular clients because here competition is more lower than other marketplaces designers created products like graphic design elements fonts add-ons design templates and stock content on master bundles some design templates you can sell here are your social media designs print designs resumes certificates landing pages and wordpress themes you can sell your business card designs as well and pretty much you can withdraw your profit starting from 50 dollar any day of the month through payoneer or paypal to try master bundles for yourself sign up with the very first link in the description and thank me later this is actually the flyer we are about to redesign and you know we do a lot of redesigns in this channel so if that looks like you consider subscribing and make sure you click on the like button if you like this video and comment your thoughts about this video so let's begin so once you open up photoshop just like this and you want to create a new document all you have to do is to go to file and once you go to file you go to where you have new and when you click on new it opens up this dialog and all you have to do is to click on print since the flyer we want to design is for print i'm going to click on a5 and that's good and next thing you want to do is to set the file name you want to design so we can make it a transition flyer cool and you can set any name you want this is actually a preset details and then you look down to where you have your unit you can set it to any unit you like but preferably i'll leave it at inches okay so this is the size in inches okay so we are designing a portrait flyer so our orientation should be portrait so you leave it at portrait okay and that looks cool and next thing you want to do is to look at your resolution whenever you are designing for print always ensure that your resolution is at 300 pixels per inch and that looks cool and your color mode should be cmyk this is because we are designing for print but pretty much i will leave it at rgb reason being that i'm making a digital print so i won't worry about converting the colors to cmyk it's a digital print so we can use rgb okay and if you'd like to know more about rgb and cmyk let me know down the comment and i will help you out with that and then you look at every other thing you can leave it at default and click on create so once you click on create it opens up this canvas that the white spot where photoshop gives you to design on and pretty much i'm designing with photoshop cc 2021 so if you are using any other version you can always be on the same page with me when you come to windows and you go to where you have your workspace and you click on reset essentials and with that you're going to be on the same page with me that is if you are designing on essentials default that looks cool so with that said let's begin our design first off i'm going to create a gradient for this background i start my designs with background treatment so to do that i'm going to unlock our original background because i like to work with our original background so click on the lock icon to unlock that and once you click on that it unlocks itself and next thing you want to do is to come down to where you have your add layer style and once you click on that you're going to see these options where you're going to click on gradient overlay so you click on gradient overlay it opens up this dialog box where we're going to set a few things there ensure your gradient overlay is checked and then you're going to look up here and we're going to set some few things here if you look at this we have a default gradient which is the red and yellow gradient which is not what i want so i'm going to click on the gradient and then i'm going to click on red double click on the red and change it to black pretty much that looks cool click on ok 
and then double click on where you have the yellow and let's choose a gray color uh, black not other black it can be something around this it looks cool around here okay that looks perfect here then we're going to look at this uh, hex code just in case you like to use the same hex code with me use this particular hex code and that looks better zoom in so you can see very well and then look at the hex code 3b 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 that's the hex code for the gray and that looks cool then you're going to click on ok and then you hit on ok again and let's set a few things here okay look at where we have a uh, canvas and the gray is not just the way we want the gradient is not set the way we want so i'm going to click on where we have our styles and click on linear set it to radial and pretty much this is how it looks like when you set it to radial and next thing you want to do is to place you can hold on the gradient and drag it to the center here so it looks like what you want then you're going to hold on your scale and reduce it again when you reduce that this is pretty much what it looks like the gray part of this um, gradient becomes smaller let's reduce it again so this is what we get okay you can leave your scale at 107 and these are things you're going to look at make sure you are at reverse okay if that's if you are following my steps make sure reverse is checked but just in case you find out that your black is inside and the gray is outside just like this okay if it's something like this then you're going to check your reverse so the gradient will reverse itself okay and make sure that align with layer is not checked okay pretty much this looks cool if this is what you did you are at the same page with me all you have to do next is to hit on ok and that looks fine so next up we're going to bring in the white crumpled paper which i have here and just click and drag and bring it to where you have your photoshop and drop it there and pretty much it creates a new layer for itself so each time you bring a new object to photoshop it automatically creates a new layer for itself and next thing you want to do is to rotate this and on your transition mode when you click ctrl t it transforms objects so on your transition mode don't place it yet rotate this this way hold shift so you can maintain a perfect rotation and then hold alt and open this up just like that okay and leave then when you are at this point you hit on okay and pretty much it places itself just right here and next thing you want to do is to add gradient map and this is what we're going to do then we're going to go down to where you have your adjustment layer and click on where you have your gradient map and when you click on gradient map pretty much this is the layer where we have the gradient map then we're going to click on where we have the gradient map editor so we can edit the gradient so you click to edit the gradient when you click it opens up this dialog box where we are going to set a few things and we're going to set this to black and white okay it's pretty much perfect just as it is but this time around we're going to do a few things here okay so we're going to bring our black to this other side and our white to this other side so we have something like this so pretty much all you have to do is to take your black to the other side and the white to the other side and when you do that we have this uh, black look of the uh, of the background okay of the crumpled paper uh, effect okay that looks cool all you have to do is to hit on okay and pretty much we want to link this gradient map to just the very first layer here because as it is it's affecting everything on these layers okay so what we're going to do is to hold on alt and when you hold on alt it helps us to clip this particular layer this gradient map to just this particular layer here let's see what it looks like and we're going to hold alt when you hold alt you see this icon okay if you click it creates this chain that helps you to make this gradient map to apply to only this first layer here okay if you don't want to do that you can right click and click on create clipping marks and it's still the same thing okay that's just what it is and then next up we're going to click on our uh, background the crumpled paper background layer just like what you see here and change the blending mode to darker color okay darker color pretty much this is how it looks like okay and if you're okay with that and if you need some adjustments if the gradient does not look cool you can double click on where you have your gradient overlay i feel 
the black is taking over the crumpled paper so much so i'm going to adjust the scale of our gradient overlay again hold on your scale and increase just like that so we get something that looks like this so it fades only this side this side this side and this side that looks cool hit on okay so with that we are done with our background treatment next thing we want to do is to create a circle click on the top layer here reason why i click on the very first layer so that once i create a circle the layer comes on top of the layer presently okay so we're going to hold on this rectangle tool this line tool when you hold on you see other tools you click on ellipse tool and clicking on the ellipse tool we're going to hold shift okay to create a circle just like that if you don't hold shift your circle will be distorted okay so you hold shift to get a circle a perfect circle just like this pretty much this is cool you can see it creates an automatic layer to itself just right here and then next thing we want to do is to take off the stroke so if you look up here you see where you have stroke and we don't need stroke click on the stroke and click on no color and then we don't have any stroke we are okay with the fill but we're going to change it to gradient okay hit on your move tool and pretty much you change it to what we have right now so you can click and move the circle to the center of the design and make sure it's at the center and once you're done with that we're going to change this circle to a gradient and to do that we're going to click on add layer style and click on gradient overlay and pretty much we have the default gradient which was there and that's not what we want so we're going to click on the gradient itself double click on black and then make sure you highlight red and click on red and pretty much this is the um color code okay this is the hex code you can copy it and use it let me zoom in again so you can see it very well that's the hex code once you have that hex code you are on the same page with me okay that's fine then next thing we're going to do is to click on okay and then double click on this black side and give it yellow okay pretty much yellow and this is the hex code again you can copy that and use it for your own hit on okay that looks cool and then hit on ok again and with that we're going to set this gradient to look well so this time around i'm going to use linear instead of radial okay and this is it you can see it looks very cool you can hold on the gradient and drag if you need more yellow than orange okay pretty much that's it and then you hit on ok that's great okay so next thing we want to do is to bring in the pictures which we'll be using for this particular design so i'm going to click on where i have my folder and highlight all the pictures and bring it into photoshop and then the pictures comes in one after the other you can reduce the sizes as they come in drop the very first one here hold alt while doing that so you can have a perfect picture you won't distort your picture many people will have their pictures just like this which is not really right okay so you just make sure you resize it properly okay place it there hit on okay and the next picture comes in you hold out reduce it again and place it around here and hit on okay and the next picture comes in you hold out reduce that again and place it around here we're going to adjust all these pictures perfectly well and then bring in the next one and then you place this one here pretty much next thing we'll be looking at is to place the pictures properly okay i'll hit on okay so then the very first thing i'm going to do is to send this particular picture to the back so control left square bracket will help you send that to the back and then click on this other picture that is the layers here pretty much my own photoshop allows me to select on any of the objects i want without coming to the layer so if your own photoshop does not support that hold control and click and you'll be able to select each object just like that i think any other version lesser than this version makes you to hold control to click but if you can't do that you can always select the layers just right here it's a matter of knowing which picture has a particular layer okay so i'm going to click on this particular image control left square bracket will send it to the back again and that looks very very cool and very nice then i'm going to click on this other picture also control left square bracket will send it to the back as well so pretty much we're going to adjust this um the uh, this arrangement again so i'm going to hold on this image and place it around here with the hope of making it to have the same shape face you can see all of them should have the very same shape on their faces 
okay and that looks cool you can place these two pictures on the same height and then take this other picture a little higher a little just like that and same with this other image take it higher a little and make sure you are selecting the layers here if you can't select directly just like what i'm doing and then you're going to place it around here and pretty much that looks cool and then with this i'm going to select all the layers and press ctrl t and resize them again because i want them to be very small and place them around here pretty much it looks like this other image is large so i'm going to click on this image again this is the layer press ctrl t hold alt and reduce the size a little place it around here that looks cool that looks cool i can always adjust it using my arrow keys all i'm trying to do is to balance the images and make sure they are all equal and placed properly okay highlight all the layers where we have the pictures and press ctrl g and reason being that we want to group all the pictures just like what you see they are all in the same group okay so if i of this eye you can see all disappear so i'm going to name this group pictures and that's fine pictures okay and pretty much i observe many people complain i'm always fast in my tutorial there is a feature on youtube that if i'm too fast you can adjust the playback speed and make it slower so that you follow up the tutorial and that will be so nice and then why i'm so fast is because i want this video to be as short as possible because if i'm slow you won't enjoy watching the video because it's going to be very long okay so then i'm going to off that and on again that's cool and hold control whenever you are selecting a group whenever you are moving a group you don't have to move one by one because if you do that you're going to move just one element in that group so you're going to click on the group layer and hold control before you'll be able to move everything so i want to move this down Okay, just use your arrow key and bring this down a little and that looks cool let's see i think this position is perfect and nice okay so next thing we're going to do is to create a layer max for these images so selecting the group layer click on where you have add layer max and when you do that it's going to add a white layer max just like this and with that we're going to off that for a purpose okay hold control and click on the ellipse thumbnail you can see this thumbnail so when you are able to hold control let me zoom that in again so if you hold control and click on that thumbnail it makes a selection on your circle on your whole circle so whenever you hold control and click on a particular thumbnail photoshop is going to make a selection of that particular element okay of that particular layer and that will be nice so reason why we are doing this is because we want to add some effects to the pictures layer okay so i've gotten the selection i'm going to bring back the pictures and pretty much where you see the layers cut that is exactly where the pictures are going to cut off okay so next thing we want to do is to hold on control so next thing we want to do is to invert this selection so i'm going to right click on the selection i can't right click that because i'm on my move tool so what i'm going to do is to click on any tool that supports selection so i'm going to either I click on my rectangular marquee tool or I'll click on my polygonal lasso tool so i'll click on polygonal lasso tool and right click when you right click you will see select inverse okay so you select inverse and it's going to select the opposite of the selection okay that's cool and nice and next thing we want to do is to click on our marks on the pictures we remember we created a max on these pictures and click on that max and then you're going to click on your brush okay click on your brush tool and make sure you have this soft brush it doesn't matter at all but just make sure you have this soft brush hardness zero that looks cool and then make sure your foreground is set to black if your foreground is on any other color you can always click on default foreground and background colors click on that or you hold on d when you hold on d it reverts to black and white okay just like this then you're going to click on this arrow to make sure that it's at black okay your foreground should be black for you to be able to do this and then there is a particular trick about this the rule is black height 
white reveal so now that we have a white max we are supposed to paint with black so if we have the inverse if we have a black max okay we're supposed to paint with white so black height white reveals so using a black um brush we're going to paint on these sides when we paint paint here it hides because black height you can look at the thumbnail and see how it hides every part of the um marks where it's black it hides and the part that is white it reveals just like that so pretty much does it so we are able to hide all the parts of these photos just like that and pretty much it looks very cool and very nice and once you're done with that you're going to press ctrl d to deselect okay the selection is gone and gone okay that's it so with that we're going to click on uh move to go back to the default tool and then click on the ellipse layer let's do little magic here when you click on the ellipse layer you're going to create that particular selection again remember all what we did was on the pictures layer so i can always deselect or take off the pictures layer and let's have just the ellipse so we can see what we're about to do very well okay then hold control and click on the thumbnail again just like what we did before hold control and click on the thumbnail again and once you do that you're going to have this selection round the circle one more time and this time around we're going to go to where we have select and when you click on select you're going to click on modify and you're going to click on contract okay now contract will bring back the selection will reduce the selection let's see how it looks like contract then when you click on contract let's type um let's say um 10 okay when you hit on 10 you click on okay so the selection contracts a little we are going to contract again so we can have a greater part of the circle so go to select modify contract and then we're going to type um 60 and hit on okay so this is what we get you see the selection is reducing itself little by little let's try that one more time because we want it to contract more than that modify contract and let's make it um let's make it 80 hit on okay so it contracts to this point at this point i think i'm okay but it's so large so i'm going to still reduce it again select modify contract this time around we're going to make it um 65 and hit on okay so as it is it's okay but it's larger than what i expected so i'm going to expand so to expand i'm going to go to select going to go to modify expand so to expand i'm going to expand just um 15 times let's see pretty much that looks cool okay so you can always expand and contract even if you've not learned anything from this video you've learned how to expand and contract okay okay so with what we have here the selection looks cool and very nice okay so we're going to go to where we have our ellipse tool again and select the layer make sure you select the layer hit on add layer max and pretty much this is what we get but then it's hiding the other side and revealing the inside and we need the opposite okay so i'm going to click on where i have my ellipse the layer and press ctrl i so ctrl i invert the max you can see black height white review so if you press ctrl i it will invert you can see what it looks like black height white reviews so white is revealing the other side of the circle and black reveals the inside so that's just what it is you can see the marks here when i press ctrl i what it looks like and when i press ctrl i again what it looks like so this is what we want okay this is exactly what we want and once this is done bring back the pictures hit on where you have your pictures i to bring the visibility okay make it visible and this is what we get pretty much it looks very cool and very nice so with this i'm going to bring in the text okay i'm not going to waste extra more time since we have everything done here already all we're going to do is to bring in the text bring in the necessary stuff which i know you can do very well so as you can see on our original design you can see the circle around here looks a kind of blending to the paper effect you can see the paper effect is showing around here so we are going to apply that to our current flyer as well okay 
going to apply that same effect to our current flyer. So go to our design, click on the circle layer. When you have the circle layer right here, you click on your blending mode and you click on where you have difference. So we're going to look for difference. So when you have difference, you can see it's not coming up. Okay, it's not coming up. And this is why we have to rasterize that layer. So you right click on where you have your ellipse layer and go to where you have rasterize layer. And once you rasterize layer, you can rasterize layer style as well. And when you rasterize layer style, you can now change it. So let's change it to difference. So when you go to difference, pretty much this is what we get. So the ellipse rhymes with the background okay so why we rasterize is because the effect could not take place as a smart object it was it needs to be raster okay so we rasterize that to be able to add this effect you can see what it looks like let me zoom in so you see very well see how the edges of this circle looks like it looks very cool okay that's it and then once you do that you're going to um bring in the type okay i'm going to type transition here with your text tool selected type this transition okay that's cool Control a to highlight or click on where you have your color and change it to white hit on okay and then change the typeface to header green okay header green let me zoom in so you can see the type okay this is header green regular that's the font and then hit on OK once that is done. And then we're going to press Ctrl T and transform. Okay, Ctrl T to transform. So with that, click on where you have your uh, move to and press Ctrl T to transform. And when you transform that, this is what it looks like. Bring this down here and place this around here. That looks cool and then you can observe that the text is behind the images you can see how the text goes behind the images and this is because the text layer is under where we have the pictures you can see the pictures layer is at the top while the uh, text is below okay it looks cool then hit on T to activate your um, your text tool and highlight T I O N and then change the color to yellow pretty much we're working with yellow here you can see it looks cool hit on okay and that looks cool and very nice you can see what it looks like pretty much this is just what we wanted okay so i'm going to type in a uh, theme okay i'm going to hit on t again and type um with capital letters you can type t h e m e okay add your colon there change the color to white as well and then change the font to metropolis okay you guys complain a lot that I don't put out my font, so you can use Metropolis just right here. Metropolis Medium, okay? Hit on that, and then we're going to adjust some things here. We're going to hit on we have a character panel. Click on that character and paragraph. Then adjust this. Let me show you what we are actually adjusting, okay? So if you look at team, when I hold on tracking and take it to this other side, click and hold. It expands this and I love expanding my text just like that so I'm going to hold control and bring it down here and that's the position hit on okay and it places itself there so I'm going to place team around here and that looks very cool and nice. so you can see I've been able to design my focal point and the pictures first before any other stuff okay so with that I'm going to click on our original design and bring in some stuff so we won't waste time hit on the logo I'll leave the logo in the description so you won't waste time or you can do this with your own logo and your own text okay hold shift click on this other text and then hold control whenever you select two objects don't forget to hold control before dragging it and take it to our original design and drop it right there so it drops itself and pretty much that looks cool just centralize that that looks pretty much cool so you can see i have my white text let me show you the font i use metropolis black was used for the title for the for the church name okay for stretch discipleship summit june edition so for june edition i have metropolis bold for that and yellow color on that so you can just do this exact same thing and you have exact same results okay that looks cool then on our previous design i'm going to bring in some other stuff also like the date okay i don't want to waste time typing all this stuff the date and the venue you can see that click on the venue and you can also click on powered by stretch ambassadors 
and then you can also click on this contact detail so pretty much this is how i redesign stuff and make it so easy hold control and drag whenever you are taking many objects hold control to do that now you can see how if even if you are not able to select your object the way i did you can always select them with your layer so you can just click on the particular layer where you have the very first one hold control click on the second one the, the next one and the next one it's still the same thing okay but if you want to have the same function as me you should up you should upgrade to this particular version of photoshop photoshop cc 2021 okay so you hold control and take it up to our current design and drop so once you drop this here you can bring this down a little and centralize that and that looks cool so that's just the position there it looks cool and then i'm going to tell you the font size i use for the date i used uh 23.89 point metropolis black that's the font and then for the venue i used 11.63 point and metropolis regular and that looks cool and for partnership and sponsors i use 7.06 points and i use um metropolis as well that looks cool you should use metropolis there for perfect result i don't want to use many fonts because here i'm seeing montserrat that's because i took this from a previous design i used montserrat but it's okay then montserrat for that and 6.99 points but you can make it seven points so pretty much it looks very cool and nice hit on okay it's too small but you can increase the sizes of this in of this uh stuff little so it will be readable then i'm going to draw a line around here so you can click on where you have your ellipse click on your line tool u is the shortcut for that click on your line tool click and hold shift to be on a straight line and create this line like that okay and you can see the line width is too much so we're going to click on where we have a uh, line size okay the stroke width reduce it a little and it's on okay it you can be 17.23 pixel it's okay it's on okay again let's reduce that to 13 okay let's just make it 13 that looks cool okay 13 pixel then change the stroke color to yellow okay when you hit on the stroke you can set it to yellow if you don't have yellow as your recent color click on this and set it to yellow and that will be cool and nice so then we have this ellipse sorry we have this uh, stroke here press ctrl j to duplicate the stroke and bring it down like this so we have two strokes here and we brought it down just like that it looks very cool and very nice pretty much this is it so next thing we want to do is to bring in the minister's names so i'm going to click on where we have cyprian uh miracle i'll just highlight all the names on this group i have them on a group so i'll just take the group we have the minister's names sorry i'll highlight all the minister's names here hold shift and highlight all the layers hold control and take all of them to our current design and drop okay so this is what we get i'm going to drop them around here pretty much that's it i'm going to adjust that to match their positions and this looks very cool and very very nice so one last thing you are going to do is to blend the images you can see the images were just brought as default i did not even work on the images but they are perfect but i'm going to brighten this guy's face ctrl m and when you once you press ctrl m it opens up this curve adjustment layer so you're going to adjust the brightness of his face you can reduce this a little uh, you see it looks like others it's on okay and then pretty much i don't have to work much about this because the images already blend themselves okay that looks cool and i'm going to save this as it is because we are done but before we end this design i'd like you to know that grouping your layers matters a lot when it comes to photoshop design just in case you want to make corrections so let's group our our design okay so i'm going to zoom in here and we have our pictures group first next thing is the church name you can see the church logo here let me zoom out you can see the church um, logo and then um stretch discipleship so you hit on stretch discipleship layer and the church logo should be together so you press ctrl g and name that group um church you can name it logo and name okay that's it so this is it okay so that's the group there and then where we have 
uh, venue, uh, date, and then the two lines that uh, works with the date, and then powered by and for partnership and support. I'm going to group them together also and name here uh, contact details. Okay, that's it. I'm going to off and on that so you see how it is. Then the names, I'm going to highlight all the minister's names and press control G. And I can name that uh, names, names, that looks cool. And then for team transition and the ellipse itself. And then I'm going to group that and name this um, team, okay? So let's see how it is. If you off that, that's just it. And this is the pictures. And then we have our background and our original background. So pretty much this is how I group stuff in Photoshop. So it's easy for me to uh, redesign. Or it's easy for me to make corrections. And know that all what we did was non-destructive. So you can always get back your images. Like if you disable these marks, you can see the images. It's still itself. So that's just it. Pretty much this is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you leave a like, share it with a friend. And if Photoshop tutorials interest you, click on this playlist and keep watching more Photoshop tutorials done by me. Thank you so much. It's Dennis here from Dennis Creatives and I will see you in the next one. Peace.